fresh off of calling the national championship game and UConn going back to back um, in advance of uh, doing some NBA playoffs as well. Our friend Ian Eagle back here in the Rich Eisen Show. How are you, Ian? Good to see you. Hey, what's up, Rich? It feels like we're connected. I've bathed for you. That's a next step wow. in our relationship. I appreciate that. <laughs> Breaking news. I appreciate that. Um, is that a game ball? Did you get a game ball behind your right shoulder? What is that behind your right shoulder? Oh, you mean my set design? I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you alluding to? Yes. Set yes. design. It is, uh, it's a game ball. It was uh, what is that? 25th anniversary of doing Nets games, which is now... 30 years, but the Nets did a, a wonderful thing for me and presented me with a game ball, a jersey that was much too large for me, and a watch as well. So uh, the triple crown. Really. Tri- did, did uh, w- or was that ball uh, really Giannis's and you took it? Is the, it was, it was that, I did. Is that what happened? I, I that- try to avoid drama, but Rich, <laughs> if you're going to go right into it and lean into it, yes. Yes, that was Giannis's ball. <laughs> I grabbed it. Yep. I said, this is my night. This is my day. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bucks were upset. I calmed it down. I quelled it. We're all good now. Mm-hmm. But at the time, a little shaky. Understood. Yeah. Understood. I'm sorry to dredge things up. I know we just okay. started. And you bathed and I dredged and it's just <laughs> not right. It's, it's, it's disrespectful. It's disrespectful. It's I understand. Good. Here's, here's, here's the, <laughs> what I would really love to know. Describe to me what it is like with Bill Raftery having a wine list in his hand. What is what is that like? <laughs> Iron Eagle. Can you describe to me what that is like when You want me to recreate it? Or... Sure, yeah. Whatever you whatever you whatever whatever it's I, yeah. I would love to be a fly on that wine list, essentially. <laughs> sir, sir, come here, sir. Uh, <laughs> this one here. Uh, what what's the price? On this? <laughs> what's the price? <laughs> And this one, what's this? No, price is of no object to Bill. <laughs> it's not It's not an issue. What What I've learned with Bill yes. is, and I've been to dinner with him literally hundreds of times, maybe a thousand. I don't know. I'd have to do the numbers. Mm-hmm. But you can't rush him along. You know, my goal is, hey, let's get in, let's get out. I'll get some work done later tonight. That is not his goal. So somewhere along the line, he needs time to ponder the wine mm-hmm. offer. Mm-hmm. And that is not a quick decision. He's he's going to talk it through. He's going to weigh his options. And you've just got to strap in and, and get ready to go on the ride with him. Yeah, it's like it's like millionaire, right? Who wants to be a Cabernet? <laughs> like, you know, if, uh, it's a 50-50. He'll sound out his, exactly. he'll, he'll talk out his answer. He'll you know? phone a friend. <laughs> hey, uh, PJ, uh, this Cabernet. <laughs> Good Cabernet. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. I love it. Carlissimo would probably be his first on the speed dial for that choice. I uh, oh I, I think he would. Gosh. Yes. You and uh and Raftery and Grant Hill were a great lesson, man. Oh, it, thank it, you. You are you are you are very welcome. And you know, yes. I I love that moment because your guys' reaction to uh, Dan Hurley shoving was it cam spencer right in the back yes i've never I've, yes. On, on, of all the games that you've called in your vast career have you ever seen a coach step on the floor and give his own player a shove to try and run a play <laughs> have you ever seen it that's never happened no right? <laughs> no i've never seen it uh, i think grant noticed it first then we went to the replay raf reacted in the moment i reacted in the moment and it's as if dan just lost all sense of where he was, who he was, what was at stake. And it just shows you uh, where he goes when he's coaching. He just has this other dimension that he goes to when he's fully committed to what he's doing. And obviously it's working. He's a back-to-back national champion. Uh, This is now a Hall of Fame resume that he's put together. And the reality is he's pushing all the right buttons. He's got a great feel for his team, how to motivate his team, how to get them ready for these big moments. And for them to plow through the competition, Rich, like they have in the last two years, this just doesn't happen anymore in college basketball. So they are an outlier to what we've seen in the national championship now for many years. The fact that no one had gone back to back since Florida and Billy Donovan, but that was with the same team. Basically, the same team came back 06, 07, and a bunch of NBA players on that squad. For this team to do it with different supporting cast members, more responsibility for some of the guys that were holdovers, it just shows you 
uh, the job that Dan did, the program that they have. And you're right. Uh, he he just goes somewhere else uh, during the moment. He doesn't black out, clearly, <laughs> but uh, he definitely has some other gear that he gets to. Yeah, he may have in that moment, because we, we interviewed Cam Spencer a couple days later, Ian, and I asked him about that moment. And there was an argument with the official as to, you know, why yep. they lost possession. And and Spencer said to Dan, that Dan Hurley said to him when they got back in the huddle, did I really hit you? Like, did I really <laughs> shove you? Like, he did not, he did yeah. not, like, believe the explanation from the official. Like, he did not remember actually putting hands on his own player. Like, that happened, you know? Yeah. Uh, I don't want to make this comparison. I'll, I'll make it lightly. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are people that break the law. And then afterwards, like, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. I don't believe that that happened at all. I don't remember any of that. Yeah, just, you know, I think from what I've heard in regards to Cam, Cam also is highly competitive, yes. verbose in those moments, will speak his mind, and that it sounded like it was a marriage made in heaven that Dan, not to say Dan met his match, he's still in charge, he's still the head coach, but Cam, vast experience, multiple programs, uh, a big brother that played big-time college basketball now with the Golden State Warriors, former lacrosse star, Pat, the fact of the matter is it sounds like Cam was a load for Dan to deal with as well, that the two of them really had some fun back and forths over the course of the year. Ian Eagle joining me here on the Rich Eisen Show. Your next game is later this week, correct? Yes, uh, you... it will be uh, Sacramento at New Orleans, the Western Conference play-in to see who gets in with the number eight seed. The news breaking just moments ago that Zion Williamson is not expected to be a part of it, so mm. a huge blow for a New Orleans team that has done it the right way, that built it up the right way. It seemed like they were in good shape at home coming from behind against the Lakers and putting pressure on L.A. in the fourth quarter, only to see Zion walk mm. off after a, a made bucket. And it's a hamstring issue. It, it doesn't appear to be a, a simple fix by any stretch and uh, just another blow to what has been a drama-filled young career for a highly talented player that is looking to take that next step as one of the superstars in the game. You've got to have postseason success to back up all of the highlights and the promise and the numbers, and that's where he currently is. That's uh, not going to happen, apparently, anytime soon. Yeah, and he was in the midst of doing it. I mean, 40 and 11. 40 and 11 with three minutes to go when that uh, apparently hamstring was gave way. And now uh, the Kings um, will be taking on the, uh, the I guess, Zion-less Pelicans for the right to take on Oklahoma City. How how much of a threat do you think Oklahoma City is here with the Nuggets and the uh, leading – Otherwise, a very deep Western Conference, Ryan. I'm buying them, Rich. Uh, I was down there. I had a regular season game pretty late in the season for OKC when they were rolling, and right. it looked like they had a chance to win the number one seed. Blown away by Mark Dagnalt, who has done excellent work. And the way they built the team, Sam Presti continued to build inside out bought into the idea that you can build through the draft and then some key acquisitions along the way. He was accumulating assets, and most people were looking at it saying, okay, what, what's he doing? He's saving them for a rainy day? No, he drafted really well. He didn't hit singles and doubles. He hit triples and home runs in his draft. And even though Holmgren didn't play one minute of his rookie year, they remained very resolute in believing that he would have a huge impact, which he has. Okay, uh, uh, Gilgis Alexander, Shea Gilgis Alexander has been more than they even imagined when they made that deal for Paul George and Kawhi Leonard at the time in L.A. wanted a proven star. Uh, who knows what the Clippers would have been like if Shea was still there with Kawhi, but it, it doesn't matter. It, it happened the way it was supposed to happen, and now he's been able to blossom and become an MVP candidate. Jalen Williams is a bona fide star in the making. They're deep. They have tremendous chemistry. I know they're inexperienced, and that'll be the first thing that people point towards, mm -hmm. but I think they're real. I, I think uh, this team has a clear home court advantage. And now we're going to see how the experience factor actually plays into it. Potentially against the Kings, you know, who eliminated yep. the uh, the Warriors last night. You want to chime in on the 
sports talk topic du jour, Ian, that the Warriors dynasty is now officially over? You want to chime in on that? I think they've they've tried to lengthen it as long as they possibly could. I think this is a dilemma for any team that wins a championship. How do you keep it rolling? How do you transition to the next iteration of what your team is going to be? And it's going to focus on Clay Thompson and how much he still has left. Is he more valuable to Golden State? Is someone willing to still pay him large amounts of money to be a part of their team moving forward? My sense would be that they will move on unless Clay just wants to take an absolute discount to keep this thing going. But it, it really feels like this is the end. This was the final chapter in, in many ways. And now you've got to figure out which parts stay and and how you now segue into whatever it is you're going to be as an organization. They had tremendous success. Uh, to me, a modern day dynasty in today's terms because of how they did it and they did it with some different pieces along the way, but I don't see how, I don't see how they can keep this core group together and expect for it to magically get better. It's, it's time. I think deep down, they know it. Mm. They've tried to postpone it as long as possible, but now the the real work begins in figuring out who stays, who goes, and what direction they're going to go in. Yeah. You got that sense. I mean, Steve Kerr saying at the podium yesterday, like nothing lasts forever. He, yeah. he literally said those words. And if anybody who knows how nothing lasts forever, it's a guy like Steve Kerr from The Last Dance. You know, he he, he can 100%. read the writing in the wall. So, uh, you know, one thing if you could do for us, because we were wondering this earlier on, now that you are calling the Kings game, can you ask Sabonis if he was in fact born with a black eye? Did, did, was, that, <laughs> it, was he born with a shiner? Because it just seems like he's always yeah. got one. Do you mind doing that for I'll, us, getting uh, on that? Yeah, yeah, I'll do some legwork on that. I'll, <laughs> I'll reach out to Arvidas. Uh, I'll do some family tree history. I'll yes. see if there's something uh, in the gene pool. Uh, he does mix it up. His numbers this season have been ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. Double double machine. That that's, that's right. not even doing it justice. It's every single game, and he always seems to have like scratches yeah. on the on the top portion of his arm yeah. on the on his back, on the exposed portion of his back, that there is a reason why mm. he has taken on this kind of role, willing to do the dirty work. He is, he does it game in game out. A lot of credit to uh, how he, how he carries himself and what he puts out there. And still, if you get a sense of who he is, he's very positive and smiley, uh, he's he's got a really nice way about him. This is one of the rarities in sports, Rich, where yes. we can look back on a trade and say both teams made out well. Yes, sir. And I really think they did. Uh, Tyrese Halliburton's obviously a star. Indiana's built around him. And for Sacramento, it's what they needed. They had to make a decision between De'Aaron Fox and Tyrese Halliburton. We could go back and forth on whether or not they made the right one. Uh, De'Aaron Fox is an all-star performer, and they got an all-star performer in someone that is a part of their core in DeMontis Sabonis. Ian Eagle here on the Rich Eisen Show. Did I notice your voice in the Dynasty documentary on the Patriots? That you Did you call Brady's first start as a Patriot? Did you do that game, Ian? I called his first home start, first home I believe. Start. Okay. And the interesting part of that story, as I remember it, is it was all focused on Doug Flutie coming back to Massachusetts Native son returns. Doug was always great to deal with mm-hmm. and and a good dude. And uh, that was the lead. That was the headline. The headline was not necessarily Tom Brady. But I do remember sitting down with Brady and thinking to myself after the meeting, man, this guy was really charming, was very likable. He goes out. He leads them in a come from behind victory. And then a couple of weeks later, I do the game against Indianapolis and they explode. David Patton is scoring every which way, special teams, offense, running game, passing game. And I made a comment during the game that they then used, I was told, on their highlight reel, like the sizzle reel every week when they got their team ready, Belichick's group put together a video. Mm -hmm. And the comment was simply, who are these guys? Because they put up 48 points, something like that against Uh, Peyton Manning and the Colts. And as we know, history then dictates that they win the Super Bowl. Brady becomes the starter. He becomes the GOAT. He's 
uh, the, the guy that we compare everybody to. That game that you just mentioned, uh, Tom Brady was a secondary story. Yeah. It was all about Doug Flutie coming back home. Because I guess the conversation was, no question, uh, how would Brady keep the ship afloat by the, yep. uh, uh, until Bledsoe comes back from that horrible yep. injury? And that was going to be my question. It was like, what type of Brady did you find in a broadcast meeting when he was just that young and starting out? But I guess my question yep. is about wh what about Belichick? I mean, obviously, you wouldn't be asking him uh, at some point, hey, how's Bledsoe doing? Or, or maybe that second time <laughs> when you saw him? Uh, honestly, I, I was thinking about that stuff the next time I had you on the show to ask you about that since I heard your, your voice calling that game back in the day on that dog. Yeah, I... I clearly remember the Brady production meeting. I actually remember the Doug Flutie production meeting as well. We yeah. met in Providence, and this is just a complete sidebar sure. to the Flutie side of it. But we meet with Flutie, and that was our last meeting of the day. So we go downstairs from our meeting area, and we exit the hotel, and Flutie ends up just in front of us meeting a buddy. He's back home, so either he was you know, grabbing some dinner or just hanging out with, with a friend, and we had given him an NFL on CBS hat, which we would give to everybody that we met with <laughs> back in the day. And we had no idea what these guys did with a hat. Sometimes you would see like a picture later on, a family member wearing it or someone <laughs> from, from the team and the staff wearing it. And this is not a knock on Doug Flutie at all. Flutie was a great dude. It just happened to be a very funny moment. So he's about 15 feet in front of us as we're walking back to our car. He's clearly walking with his buddy to their car. And he doesn't know we're behind him. And he takes the hat and he puts it on top of one of the meters that you would park at and just leaves it there. <laughs> and I'm like... Dude, did you just leave the hat on a parking meet? And he did. So I took the hat back. Yes, yes, you did. Stuck it in my bag. Just and he just it. he jumped into someone's car and drove. I was like, I guess like Doug Flutie doesn't need any more NFL on CBS caps. Our Bill Belichick meeting, I have no recollection of. <laughs> I would tell you probably there was not a detailed answer to the question, how's Drew doing? <laughs> and he didn't need uh, he didn't get a hat either. He didn't have. Uh, I think we gave Bill a hat. Yeah, he he might have. He might have tossed it to Bears Najarian, <laughs> who was was his guy, his right hand man. I believe Bears might have gotten that hat. <laughs> oh my God, that is so funny. Doug Flutie is not hat worthy, man. I just that's, not, that's not at it. the time. He had too many hats, Rich. There you go. Too many hats. Well, speaking of wearing hats in the Eagle household, uh, congratulations. Uh, not just to you know, obviously, what's going on with you, but your son killing it oh, man. seriously voice of big yeah. 10 football on nbc obviously a lot of folks out here in los angeles um enjoyed his time brief stint calling uh radio games for the los angeles clippers yep. and then the news today he he's calling team usa basketball for the olympics for nbc men's and women's congratulations Ian, yeah on amazing Noah's stuff thanks rich very cool very full circle moment for him he uh he did luge in high school, so I know this really <laughs> is emotional for him. Well, you know what? Winter Olympics are right around the corner, you know? Winter Olympics right around the corner. It's yeah. terrific. Congratulations on on Thanks, uh, on all of that. You know, hey, listen, you know, my daughter, uh, she, she won her uh, all-star game uh, uh, regional bracket. Um, and my, when my sons are doing their stuff, I fell. And I can only imagine what you... You're going through, Same. man. Congratulations Same. on that. Go yeah, ahead, Chris. Really I know you want to bring it up. I, I told him about this in yeah. our phone conversation yesterday. Go the ahead. The IRSCI, yeah. Ian. That's like the perfect CBS show. Yeah. Oh. The IRSCI. I'm in. You know, that's I'm investigating in. right now. Ipe Mitsuhara ripped straight from the headlines, right? You can do a promo for that. You know what I mean? Dude, I mean, your elevator pitch, I would have been in. It wouldn't have taken even a full coffee meeting. I would have taken the gig right away no you put it on the promo list i put will list. kill it okay I'll kill it. fantastic i knew you would and you we, we thought of you you we thought of you instantly all right so <laughs> your homework is to find out from sabonis if That's he was scary. born with a shiner please do that um 
Um, do do you know what your first round series assignment is yet, or, or we, we haven't? Uh, not that official, way? not official yet. My sense okay. is uh, we'll jump around from Friday to Sunday, okay, to Tuesday to Thursday, and the first round normally you're just on a bunch of different series, and then in the second round you get assigned a specific series. Got and it. for me, it's great. I, I love seeing a bunch of teams and getting a taste of the playoffs and a bunch of venues. So hopefully that's the way it goes. Well, yeah. And I look forward to it as always. You're the best. Ian. thanks for the time, sir. Guys. Great. And great to see you guys. Truly. Thank you. Uh, this is like next level stuff. Appreciate and I brought it. my lighting guy in uh, Nick. <laughs> Nick, thank you. Thanks to we're Nick. We're good. Thank you. Nick. Shut it down. Shut yeah. it down. Yeah, we're good. I, it's never, a union thing. I've never <laughs> said, by the way, no, but you're also just a, you're a giver. You're a people a person. Thing. And uh, I, I've never said this to another guest before. So you're first. Thank you for bathing before Zooming. In that <laughs> America, order. I think, thanks me for bathing. <laughs> Indeed. Thanks, Zion. You be well, sir. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.